The entire catalyst for why this video is existing and why this review happened is that I hate looking like a Ben Tang cosplay every time I wear an Apple Watch. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Swan Entertainment, and today we are talking about the Aura Ring, and I guess technically the Apple Watch. This is a health wearable. See those little sensors in there? I've been hearing about Aura Ring off and on for a couple of years now. Earlier this year, uh, TikTok was talking about it because they did a collaboration with Gucci to do a Gucci designed Aura Ring. I think you got a year free of their app usage in the service out with that as well for like a thousand dollars, I think was the ring. And so I was looking into it because I was like, I mean, it sounds like a weird collab, but I guess I can see why it makes sense. I do think that investing in jewelry is probably a good idea in the long run. It's one of those things where, especially uh, precious metals, precious stones, things like that, um, a lot of those go up in value over time versus say like a lot of handbags where some do go up in value. Uh, but all in all, uh, the moment you wear it out of the store or carry it out or it gets a scuff or sun damaged at all whatsoever, it does start deteriorating in value. It's a lot of stones and precious metals, those, hold their value, uh, I would say better than certain other material goods as far as like luxury purchases go and things like that. But that's just like my own personal philosophy and has really nothing to do with this ring. I like keeping track of my health, okay? So I have an Apple Watch because I was actually gifted an Apple Watch as part of a brand deal for a uh, fitness app back in 20, 21. You guys knew it as Delta Trainer. Um, they now go by Copilot. It's a uh, personal training app. I really like using them. I still use them. I've tried to work with them again. And they're like, your audience is too young. We want an older demographic. Fair. But they gave me an Apple Watch, this Apple Watch, because it links to their app. I was actually looking into getting an Apple Watch at the time when they reached out to me. So again, it's like, what do I put out into the universe? Which is what the universe gives back to me, that type of thing. In theory, I like this thing. I like the health tracker. I like the music functionalities. I like, there, there's a lot to like about the Apple Watch. I hate how it looks visually. I just do. I'm not really a watch person, but I see the value in like say more expensive watches. Again, investing in watches and things like that, investing in pieces that you like to see your money. Like uh, what's the Carrie Bradshaw line? I like my money where I can see it hanging in my closet. But I've just never really been a watch person, okay? And so this, I get it. I understand, I and I like a lot about it. I just hate how it looks visually. And before you say, Amanda, it's the band. That's That's the issue. I have tried eight, I'm holding five. I have tried eight different bands for the Apple watches, okay? This is the only one, this elastic, ones like this, that does not cause irritation in my skin and doesn't get super gross, super easily. And I've actually found this is very easy to wash, these ones, they get gross. Your skin gives off oils and dead skin cells and stuff. I don't know why the silicone ones irritate my skin. I have no other issues with silicone. Tried the metal ones, I don't like how they pinch my skin. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm a complainer, but I like being comfortable, okay? If I'm gonna be wearing something all the time. Not just for working out, that's not the only reason I like wearing these, like I said, but I also am a YouTuber. I work from home. I run a very sedentary, solitary lifestyle, okay? And so having something that tracks my fitness, the walking I do, I walk Hermes a lot, getting those steps in. I like that a lot. Being on top of my steps, I think is a good way to stay healthy. Um, and also I have a lot of issues with sleep. And so I think it's important for me to have accurate sleep data. I don't think this is an actual term, but it's what I call it, intermittent insomnia, where I go through bouts of basically not sleeping. Um, and it's something that I've been dealing with since I was literally a teenager. I should probably do a sleep study with it, but it's very inconsistent. It's annoying as hell. And sometimes there's nothing that triggers it. Sometimes it's stress, sometimes it's nothing. I also have this issue where be from working as a uh, barista for a year and a half, two years working opening shifts, I physically cannot sleep past 8 a.m. I cannot sleep in. It doesn't matter if I went to bed at 4 a.m., I cannot sleep past 8 a.m. I don't know what it is. I, I, it's just something that's kind of trickled over from me me spending several months waking up at 4, 4.30 a.m. to go into work at five to open the shop. You know, it's just how my sleep schedule is adjusted. I don't know if it's because subconsciously I feel like I'm late for work even though I haven't worked there in two years. I don't know. It sucks, it's not pleasant. I don't recommend it. I don't like this for sleep. I don't like how it tracks my sleep. I don't think I get accurate sleep data from an Apple Watch. And that was one of the reasons that I was like, oh, the Aura Ring is supposedly better at tracking sleep data. When I'm wearing a cute outfit, it doesn't go with everything. I've tried different color of bands. I personally don't like how it looks on me. I'm a short person and certain things stand out on me. If I'm wearing a cute top, 
and then I've got this hunk of plastic and metal and tech on my arm. I feel awkward. I don't like it. I don't want to wear it all the time, but I want the information. I want the data. I, I like the data. I want the data, but it's ugly. Someone's gonna be so mad at me when I talk like this. I don't, it's my personal preference. I don't like how it looks on myself. Aura ring, I like that it was sleeker. They have a bunch of different colors. They have four different colors. They have the gold, the silver, the black, and then the matte black. But obviously the gold, silver, and black are also shiny. So that's the one I got. I got gold because I've been wearing a lot of gold jewelry lately. So I figured that was a lot of the jewelry that I have, a lot of the jewelry that I continue to buy is gold or gold plated. And I believe this one's gold plated. So I got the Aura Gen 3 Heritage, which I believe is one of their newer rings, if not the newest ring. I just got an email about their fourth gen. So I think they have a new generation coming out there just doing the updates. Oh, they have a rose gold as well, my bad. So the Heritage, which is the one that I got, it'll show up has that flat bit right at the top, which I personally like so that I always know where the sensors are. I know they're always gonna be opposite of that flat bit right up here. I know, I'm not sure if it's showing up well, but see where the sensors are at the bottom of those three little dots? Those need to be on the knuckle of your hand whenever you're wearing this. So I liked having the flat top, so I would always know externally without taking the ring off where the buttons always are because I don't always, I can always feel that. You get so used to it, you can't really feel it. So that's why I liked that one, which is the heritage style. The horizon style is the one that's just the plain flat band. I don't know, would you consider it? I mean, I think it's a band ring. I think it's genderless. That's just my view, but I can understand why the, the detailing, whatever, if you can even call it that of the shape, why some people may see that as slightly more feminine. I can understand that. Personally, I think it's a genderless Ring. A true engineering breakthrough. The Aura ring may be small, but it is mighty. The most stylish wearable on the market is jam packed with features, accuracy, and innovation. Research great sensors, monitoring your sleep, activity, recovery, temperature, heart rate, stress, and more with precise accuracy. Longer battery life, up to seven days battery. Fast charging gives you a full charge in just 20 to 80 minutes. Fingers the ideal source for accurate heart rate data, more sensitive to movement, and more accurate across all skin tones. Until I said, hey, I'm reviewing the Aura ring on Instagram. That was the only time people were commenting on how chunky the ring looks. No one's been like, what is that? And from the, the side angle, you can't really see that there's like two layers, like it's, there's the gold plated layer and then the eternal clear layer that has the sensors protected inside of it. You can't really see from the top, the side. And it's something that at first it was chunky, I will say. It felt a little weird at first, but over time I've gotten very used to it, the same way that you get used to wearing any ring. So like I said, the more accurate sleep data was something that I was interested in. I've heard about a lot of people tracking their temperatures, like in the morning they get their body temperatures in the morning to track ovulation and things like that. Not super into that. There's zero risk of me being pregnant or anything like that. Let's just put it that way. I paid $3.99 for this which came with the free sizing kit because I wasn't sure about the size and I didn't want it to be wrong. And I didn't want to make a $400 mistake. Though I typically am a seven to eight ring size, I decided to do the Aura Ring size kit, one, to review it for you, but also to make sure that, you know, this ring, that's like an investment in a sense. It's not a cheap ring. It's not like a $25 ring, you know? I wanna make sure it fits, obviously. And especially since it's a wearable data tracker and all of that, I wanna make sure that it fits well. This came shipped and this is technically free, I guess, because I'm actually ordering the ring itself. Hermes, we can't leave yet. So I'm usually a seven or an eight. So this is a seven. I think the bumps, as you can see, they got the ridges. So I think this is true to size. Oh, see, yeah, that's not gonna work. That's way too tight. I'm glad I did this. I was gonna, I, I was like, I can just order a seven. It would not have fit. Which one would that have fit? My ring finger. I don't wanna wear it on my ring finger. They suggested, I think pointer finger. That fits good. It's a little snug. Yeah, I think I should just go, should I go with the eight? What do you think? Hermes is sniffing it. What I'm gonna do is wear the ring for a little bit, the sizer, and just kind of make sure that it feels comfortable, make sure that it's not, you know, making my finger turn purple or anything. So if that is the case, then I'm gonna have to go with the nine, but I'll, you know, type on my computer, I'll get some work done. I do have to work out today with my Apple Watch, so we'll see how that all works out. I paid for $3.99, okay, and then $15 shipping. On here, silver, $2.99, black, stealth, which is the matte black. The rose gold is sold out in my size uh, for the heritage. It's now $4.49 for the gold heritage. I did not pay 449 for this. It's more money over all in all. And then plus taxes and everything and shipping. 
That will be like a $500 ring right now. So shit, okay, the cheapest option is silver. That's the cheapest option. Oh wow, the Horizon all around is more expensive. Why is the Horizon more expensive? They're both gen three. Why is this one different? 349 for the silver Horizon, which is the one that I did not get for the silver. For the black, it's 349. For the stealth, it's 449. And for the gold, it's 499. So $100 more than what I paid for this base price before taxes and all of that. But you know, again, it's something you're gonna be wearing. That's the goal, you're wearing it all the time. So if it's something you like, think about it, think about the pricing, think about all that. Oh no, it's titanium. It's not even, it's not even plated, it's titanium. Oh, that explains why it's fucking scratched and shit. So yeah, this thing's scuffed like hell. Um, it's not gonna show up on camera. Um, I just noticed it because I'm clinically insane. This bit, cause I tried to always make sure that it was facing up, didn't get scratched a ton, but the bits where I would say grab a steering wheel, a handrail, uh, things like that. That's pretty scuffed up on this side. Nothing drastic. There's no like deep gouges or anything like that, but they're just little scratches that I noticed that one's a pretty deep one. Jeez, yeah, I can see through the gold at that part. Now that I'm literally deep dive looking at this in the light. Yeah, overall it's not too bad. And this thing does get smudgy, you know, like I'm literally touching with my fingers right now. So it's getting, you know, oils and things like that, but it's pretty easy to clean. Nothing's stuck to it. I wash my hands with this thing on. The water resistance works really well, I would say. Um, I never had any issues with water damage. I never went swimming with it or took a shower with it. I did take it off then, but I'd wash my face with it on. I'd wash my hands with it on, no problem. So for this one, the 399 that I paid for this originally, you get six months of memberships on, it says on us, but it's included in the cost of the ring. So you get six months of the membership through the app. After that, it's 599 a month after, uh, afterwards. Beginning November 1st, all ring purchases will come with one month of membership in Oh, so they're changing it. From now until October 31st, good time. I'm putting out this video at the start of October, raising the price and you're giving them less time on the membership? Are you lowering the membership? Because it still says $5.99 a month. Besties, I have questions. The reason I'm reviewing this now versus a week ago was because I wanted to wait until after I got back from my trip to Europe to review the Gone Girl River Cruise. For a variety of reasons, predominantly, I was gonna be doing active walking tours and things like that and kind of moving around and I wanted to see how it would track those random bursts of walking and how I could talk about readiness and things like that. However, I also wanted to see how it would deal with the time change skip that I was going to be doing because I was traveling, I was leaving here, California on the 14th. I was arriving in Budapest on the 15th. I had about 15 hours of flight time in there, a couple hours in the airport, but not a ton. It was mostly flight time. And I was going to be jumping ahead from the 14th to the 15th. So I was only gonna have technically like, I think a 16 hour 14th. And so I wanted to see how it would adjust with sleep and the time jump all in all, because also I am not a plane sleeper. I can, but I'm not someone who can fall asleep on a plane and stay asleep on a plane. I'm a, I'm a pretty light sleeper, so I'm a, a power nap person off and on on the plane, or I'll fall asleep for 10 minutes, I'll fall asleep for two hours, an hour later, you know, things like that. I'm up and down in a, in a plane, unless I take a Benadryl and pass the fuck out, which I did not do this trip, which I should have, but I didn't. So I wanted to see how it would track that sleep and how, how well it was at tracking multiple naps over the span of say 14, 24 hours, okay? Because I had done a couple of naps in there and it would log my naps, which was nice. I do like that it's like intuitive with logging my naps. Something that was annoying was that there's no way for me to log a nap in there, I can add a workout. There's tags, but the tags don't really do much other than it's tagging system for me. It doesn't really help their system that much. The tags are kind of nice if you wanna see like looking back because it doesn't tell you like, oh, hey, you did this on this day. And if you're like me, dates and things are like relative. I just know, okay, on this day I did X, Y, and Z. And then I watched this show on TV. I, I remember things like that. I don't remember like, oh, on the 27th of uh, September, I did this. I don't I don't think like that with the number and all of that. I think about it by events of things that happen. So the tagging system I do like for myself. I can also go through like this with different days, which I like that I can keep going. Certain things I don't get updates all the time, like the body temperature. There's kind of updates that you can see here and there. I've been wearing this for coming up on two weeks now. Um, and I'm starting to see they're starting to get a little more specific with like my trends and my recommendations and things like that. Cause it has more than like five days of data. Um, that being said, I did wait till this thing died and then charged it fully. And so it kind of gives you about four, four and a half days before you get down to like the 21, 25% 
uh, left battery on this thing before it's like, hey, charge before bed. Somehow it logged me walking. I don't know why it logged me walking. Um, I think it was just because when I was moving around the apartment, setting things up, it tracked that as my elevated heart rate of me setting up my gear and all of this getting ready to film as me walking around. That could be the case and getting ready. I was on my feet a lot. So readiness is kind of measuring a couple of different things. It's measuring mostly based on your sleep, how awake you are, how ready you are to achieve your tasks and including those throughout the day. And sometimes I get messages where it's like, hey, you've slept all right, but because of the lack of REM sleep you got or the lack of deep sleep you got, your readiness, your focus is gonna be a bit off. So you may wanna take it easier today. Maybe have little tasks versus like serious deep thought tasks, which it's fun that you guys are saying that I'm an idiot, but I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. I know that's not what you're telling me, but it, te it tells me things like, you know, uh, resting heart rate throughout the day, heart rate vi variability, like 23 MS. What does that even mean? The one thing that I don't like is that it talks about variations in certain things, but it doesn't really give me like what my base is. So for example, the body temperature, and this happened while I was traveling a lot, is it would notify me like, hey, your body temperature was elevated while you were sleeping and various things. I was actually in Austria during a bit of a cold snap. It was freezing. And so my room, I actually pretty much never ran the AC in my stateroom on the boat because I was cold like the entire time. And so it understandably while I'm sleeping, I'm bundled up more. It makes sense to me why maybe my temperature would be a little more elevated. My body temperature would be elevated because I was cold, so I was bundled up. But also it doesn't tell me what my base is. So there was one time where my base went negative I don't know what that means. What day was this? September 1st. Oh yeah, I was flying to Orlando in that time. Little things of what goes up. But yeah, it was very consistently elevated uh, throughout the average when I was in, what day was this? The 24th Saturday? Oh yeah, I was not, that was when I was jet lagged. I wanna know what would happen if I had a fever. Like on a weird note, I don't want COVID. I already had COVID, but if I were to get it again, or if I were to get the flu, I'm getting my flu shot this week, I think. Side note, get your flu shots. I wanna know how it would act to me actually having a fever. I do wanna know that data. If I get a flu or something like that, I'll have to update you. Respiratory rate, 17.9 minutes. Again, there's certain things where it's like, I wish you would tell me more information. I can hit the information button, it tells me a bit. Or track your respiratory rate while you sleep. Your respiratory rate is the average number of breaths you take per minute. Although your respiratory rate is not used to score your readiness, it is a good indicator of your health status. The typical respiratory rate for a healthy adult is at least 12 to 20 breaths per minute. See, things like that. Tell me that. Tell me what my base temperature is. I think things like that, updating the app, I think that would be a really good idea. Like for example, with the temperature, with like my average sleep, things like that. Sleep over time, it gives me my average sleep score. My average sleep score is dog shit. More often than not, I get about six hours of sleep more often than not, which is not great. Because breathing is highly individual, it's best to compare your numbers to your own baseline. 17.9 beats per minute apparently is my average for today. 12 to 20 is normal. Cool, my lungs are doing good. Oh, so for the week, my readiness score average is 73, which I guess is a good average to have. So the bar on here shows the readiness and then the resting heart rate. So my resting heart rate, 71 beats per minute. I don't know how good that is. Let's see, is that good or bad? Normal resting heart rate for adults can range anywhere from 40 to 100 beats per minute. It takes about two weeks for Aura to learn your personal baseline. See, so things like that. I've been using this for over two weeks now. So uh, the personal baseline that I'm having, I think is, uh, it should know by now. So my readiness score is 66. My average readiness score for the month of this month compared to last month is 66. The lower average readiness score so far, but in this month I've had a lot more travel that I usually have and um, a lot more inconsistent sleep than I usually have, I would say, because of said travel. So for today, uh, readiness contributors, uh, resting heart rate, HRV balance, body temperature, recovery index, sleep, sleep balance, previous day activity, activity balance. That all feeds into your readiness for each day. So uh, my body temperature, optimum, my sleep, good from last night, that's good. Previous day activity, optimal. I was walking around a lot at uh, Vid Summit, so pretty good activity. Activity balance, good. My sleep balance, awful. So there's optimal, there's good. And then rather than saying dog shit, they put pay attention. Like I'm kind of in a bad spot, but you're not too bad yet. My resting heart rate, it's actually saying that's not great. 71, but it's between 40 and 100. How is that not great? I have anxiety and I drink a lot of caffeine. That's probably why it's so high. <laughs> Apparently my resting heart rate got up to 100, over 100 beats per minute at some point around 2 a.m. when I was sleeping. What did I dream about? Sleep's the thing. So as you're gonna see here, I'm gonna show you. There were times where it did 
missed day. So the one for Monday, it missing Monday, that's fine. I did not wear the ring on Monday. I know that for a fact. There's a night where there's no data. It doesn't put like a dot, dot, dot. It literally just shows as nothing for that night. Kind of like a good visual of like, yeah, get your shit together. The 14th, I woke up at about 3 a.m. to leave here at four to get to the airport by like 440 something, I don't know. But I ended up getting three hours and 45 minutes. So it's a super low sleep night. It says there's no sleep data for the 15th and then it shows Friday. I wish it would show me how many naps I took because it did add uh, some time in there because it said time of sleep that I was at. Did it log any of my naps? There were naps, so I'm surprised it didn't log them. Yeah, see, so on the 15th, I didn't technically go to bed, but I did sleep quite a bit throughout the 14th and the 15th that would count as essentially my sleep night, okay, for the airport and for the airplane. It only logged 27 minute nap that I did. Um, and so that's the only data that it shows on there is from a nap. And that's so little that it doesn't even show up on the graph. <laughs> but I know that I slept more on my 14 hour plane ride than 27 minutes. I know I slept more. Thing about the Aura Ring is that it seems to only have the capability to track one nap at a time at any given day. And there are times like the 27 nap, 27 minute nap. After that, I took at least a two hour nap and this thing was fully charged. So there's no reason that this thing shouldn't have tracked a nap. It's catching that first nap. So I know it's not like, oh, you're in the air, you're losing signal, things like that. It's catching that first nap. And it did that on the flights home as well. So I know that that's not the issue. It's not that I'm in the air and that it's not catching the data because I'm not, I'm away from a signal. It's not that. I took three separate flights there and three separate flights back. It should have caught all of the naps and it did not. So something like that, I do think is something that could be worked on. And I know that multiple naps throughout the day is not a, a normal thing to deal with, but that's something that like, you know, what else is it missing if it's missing multiple naps? So that's something that did affect my readiness score. And that's something that I would have liked to know because it would have helped with me trying to adjust with my jet lag that I ended up having. Okay, so this thing like the Apple Watch has a basically move every hour instead of stand every hour. The Apple Watch tells you to stand every hour. Everyone's like, you can turn that off. And I hate that they tell you that because that's not, the point of what I'm about to talk about, but still it's something you can turn off. But I always think I get it at the most inopportune times. Like when I'm literally relaxing, finally sitting down after a while, or I'm in bed. This thing, what I like about the app is that it tracks how many times it had to send me that alert. Like, hey, you should go and move. So yesterday I was walking on a lot of the conference so they didn't have to tell me all that often. I got zero. Two alerts on uh, Wednesday. I got two alerts on Sunday. And it counts also how many hours I was inactive while I was awake. So like nine hours of inactivity on the 24th. Yesterday, I only had six hours of inactivity. Sometimes I have a very high number of inactivity. This ring made me realize something that this thing does as well. It's most wearables, my understanding is, or at least the ones that I'm familiar with, do. Time to stand, stay active, move around every hour, that type of thing. However, I think there needs to be a bit more intuitive nature in these rings as far as those uh, recommendations. I did a hike on one of the uh, final days of my trip. It was a good hike, but it was an active hike. Okay. I was sweating, getting a lot of work up. I, it was, it was a lot. And so when I finally got back to the boat and I finally sat down, the, I got a notification commending me on the amount of time that I would think it was like three hours straight that I was hiking. Okay. My ele uh, high energy, high elevation, three hours straight, got a nice notification, like good job. Take time to rest now, take some time to rest. So I sat down and I had myself some a drink and I had a snack and I sat down. I got to talking to some people, we got to talking. And then all of a sudden I got a notification telling me it was time to move around. I've been inactive for too long. But this thing told me it was time to sit down. I think I get more than an hour to sit down if I want to, if I just did three hours of activity that you commended me on. So I think that these apps, all of these wearables, there's something there for bridging the gap for the notification systems for the intuitive leap. Because it, again, it's tr they're able to track how long I was active and they're able to be like, it's good time to recover now. There's a cool down portion, you should be doing that now. It should also be able to adjust that notification for activity out every hour. Because yeah, I just did an uphill hike for three hours. I should be able to sit down for at least two. I should be allowed to do that as a treat. I know it's something you can turn off. I do think those notifications are good and you should be able to adjust the frequency but the apps, I don't know. I think there's something a little more intuitive that could be happening with those notifications is all I'm saying. All in all, I like this thing. I do. 
The price is something I understand. A lot of people can't pa get past that. So that's the one thing where it's like, again, mm, I'm torn on the price because the new price, they fucked with the price. And before with the price, I could be able to say like, oh yeah, six months free of the app is pretty good. And then $5.99 afterwards. For a data like that, it's pretty good. Which Apple Watch do I have? I wanna talk about this in comparison to the Apple Watch because obviously this is just a health wearable. I can't get tweets on this. I can't get texts on this thing. I can't control my music from this thing. It's just a health wearable. That's all I am paying for. That's what it is. It's a pretty thing that I can wear and I can get my health data, which is the important part that I am talking about for this video. Apple Watch SE, that's the one I have, I believe. So yeah, from 249. But when I got this one, it was older. So I'm not entirely sure what the price was. So obviously you're getting more from the Apple Watch. That's not up for debate here. You're getting more. The sleep data is what I mainly care about and I find that I like what I get from this. Would I buy another one? Yes. I'd probably be giving way more look at the pricing of the other rings and the other styles. Um, I would definitely go with the, Her the Heritage again because it's the cheaper model apparently. Not quite entirely sure why it's cheaper. I don't know how much more data, there's no way there's more sensors in the other one because the sensors have to go on the same part of your finger. So it doesn't matter what the shape of the ring is and at that point, because the sensors are where the sensors are, it doesn't matter. I mean, I would buy this as gifts for people because I do like how it looks. I like that it's sleek. See, this is the problem here because I like the data. That's why I like this. That's why I would look at this, but I value the aesthetics. So I don't know how much the aesthetics of planes like you guys, but like what I like, I like this, how this looks. I get the same type of data, less usability for the Apple Watch here, but that's not what this is about. This is about the data. I like the data more and I like that this is subtle. I like that you can't tell that it's a wearable. I like that this doesn't clash with my outfit. I'm never not with my phone, you know? So there are some instances where people are like, oh, I like it because then I get text messages when I don't have my phone on me. I don't not have my phone on me. I have the luxury of this being my job. I'm working, I have my phone on me, sorry. And most places now they have you take your Apple watches off now, a smart watch off now. This is something that I can keep on. I was able to go through the airport with this on. No one gave me any trouble with that, which was nice. Um, I don't know if that's a threat to national security, but no one questioned my ring, so. That was nice and didn't set off any alarms or alerts when I went through the metal detectors. I would not recommend this to everyone because the price, especially if you are not able to do it in the next month, honestly, the part of what makes this worth it is the six months of the free app usage and all of that. Um, because then you have time to try things out. I think they're trying to weasel things out, like people sending them back after six months maybe. Who knows what it is. They're, it looks like they're raising the prices and they're lowering the amount of free time. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like it. If you're gonna do it, I recommend doing it soon. This video should come out within the first or second week of October. Get it then, if you're gonna do it at all. Have you ever heard of Aura Ring? Um, would you get an Aura Ring? Do you also want personal data, but you hate looking like a Ben 10 cosplay with your Apple Watch? Do you think I'm stupid to even be considering talking or buying or recommending this in any capacity? Let me know, comment down below, I wanna know. Reminder, I have a podcast as well, Shannon's podcast. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. Shout out to my patrons, thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also like support my Patreon, that'll be listed down below. If you like to me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it, have a lovely day, goodbye. Every once in a while, this ring, grew, uh, the sensors inside glow green or red, and I have yet to find out exactly what that means. But I do feel like I'm in danger or like I've done something right. So it's working well with my little like reptile brain. Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crash PC, China, David, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Era, Ayal, Hopeless, Incognito, Jackery, James, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lexi, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, S, Meme, Lord, Michael, Michael, J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Rudd, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Cutie, Randy, Wendy, Williams, Andrews, Wink.